Hey guys, my name is Lily and today I want to make a video on how you can calculate the vial size of your solar system. So this solar system here is a 12 volt solar system and I always get the question how do you size the wires of your solar system? And the wires are sized to the amperes of a certain load. So we have different wire sizes here, for example uh, in between the inverter and the batteries there are thicker wires then also we have a certain thickness of wires coming from the solar charge controller and then we also have thinner wires coming down from the solar panel. So for calculating the wire size you actually have to know how many amps are flowing over the cables and conductors. And some devices have more amps flowing than others. Uh, here for example the inverter is the strongest device and has the most amps flowing over the cables. Uh, so how do we how do we calculate the wire size for the inverter? Well, um, here we can see two figures. We have 1000 watts, okay, that's the continuous power, but it also can do a surge power of 2000 watts. So which of the values should you now take for the calculation? The right answer is 1000 watts because most of the time um, it's not going to be over 1000 watts and the surge power is only for a couple of seconds. Now if there's something going on with the load, let's say for example the inverter is drawing 2000 watts for a longer period of time, then after a couple of seconds the fuse is going to blow. So this is why it's important that you always have some kind of fuse or breaker protecting your device. And the fuse is there to not only protect the inverter but also to protect the wires from burning down. And this is the reason why we size the wire size to the continuous power which is 1000 watts. But with the wattage alone you cannot calculate the wire size because you always need to know what voltage that you have on your system. And the volts on my system is 12 volts. My uh, batteries are connected in parallel so I have a 12 volt system coming from the batteries and then also this inverter here is a 12 volt pure sine wave inverter. So the inverter has to match the batteries and also now we can calculate um, the amperes. And how are you going to do that? Well first of all here is a chart that a lot of um, people are using. This is um, a chart by Blue Sea Systems I believe and it's a really awesome chart that you can find in the internet. I will leave a link in the description below. And here you can see that uh, in the first row here, in the columns, you can see the amps. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 amps and so on. So for our system we have 1000 watts divided by 12 volts. So we get 83.3 amps. So now if we take a look at our chart here, this is 80 amps. Here's 90 amps, so we would need 4 gauge. But it can also handle 100 amps and that's important because the fuse size um, is actually 100 amps on the system. Alright, so we have 4 gauge and then we also have to check the length. So for up to 3 meters or 10 feet, we can use the 4 gauge wire. So the length from the inverter down to the batteries is about one meter. So we are fine and we can use the four gauge wire. So now of course it's more complicated than this because that's the American size. But here in Europe we have the metric size. And here at the side gladly they have included a metric wire comparison table. And if we take a look at four gauge, you just follow down the path here and then you get 25 square millimeters. And this is what I used for my system. Here you can see I've labeled the wire with 25 square millimeters. So this cable can handle up to 100 amps with no problem and also the fuse here is 100 amps. So that's a good thing. Uh, it's not good if you have a too big fuse for the cable because this would be a problem because then first the cable will burn down before the fuse blows. So make sure that you also consider the fuse size uh, that you are using. 
Then also here I would like to show you a small detail that you might have missed. Actually this conversion table is not one to one because 25 square millimeters is a little bit larger than 4 gauge. So this is why um, this uh, line is not straight to the side but downwards. That means that 25 square millimeters is a little bit larger than 4 gauge. So it's not exactly the same size. So the 25 uh, square millimeter wire actually can handle a little bit more than 100 amps. Now down here I have a 125 amps fuse but that's directly connected to the batteries so that's fine here and there's no cable in between. Okay so these are the cables between the inverter and the battery and those need to be the thickest because most of the amps are flowing from the battery to the inverter. But what about the cables that are coming from the solar charge controller feeding into the battery? So in this case we are talking about the cables in the middle, okay? This is where it says battery. So how thick do these cables need to be? The maximum amount of current that this solar charge controller can deliver is 30 amps on those terminals. So now let's check the chart again. So here we have 30 amps and it says 10 gauge wire if the distance is closer than 3 meters or 10 feet and 10 gauge wire is 6 square millimeters. So it would be fine to use 6 square millimeters but I opted for a bigger cable because I had one laying at home. So I went for a 16 square millimeter cable which is a little bit of an overkill but it's going to make your system about 3% more efficient. Now another reason why I made the cables down here thicker is basically because I want to have the option to upgrade to a stronger uh, solar charger. Maybe in future I decide to get more solar panels and then I also already have the cables available. So for me that was important and this is why I have used the bigger cables uh, which is basically just this cable, this one and this one. The other ones here come from the inverter and that's 25 square millimeters. All right, the next we have some cables that are going to the solar panel and these cables that are leading to here, these are six square millimeters. So we already have found out that with six square millimeters, that's 10 gauge and we could transport 30 amps. Uh, right now I'm only transporting maybe 12 amps but yeah in future I might upgrade to a bigger solar panel and then I already have the right cables uh, built into my system. Yeah and then we got this USB terminal here and the maximum voltage that is allowed for one of the sockets here is 120 watts so we have two sockets so that's 240 watts and the voltage which is coming out of here is about 13. So we have 240 watts divided by 13 volts. It's about 18 amps. So now if we take a look at the table here, the next bigger size is 20 amps. We need a 14 gauge wire for this here. And 20 amps is actually the maximum amount of amperes that can come out of this load terminal. And this is where I have connected the wires to the USB sockets. All right, so this is how you can easily calculate the right wire size for your cables. But if you take a look at my system, you can see that actually all of the cables, they are hanging in the air. So none of the cables here are touching the wall, except for this one, but only for like one centimeter. And the rest is really just hanging in the air. And that means that those cables, they get cooled perfectly. But what if the cables are mounted on a wall? Or what if the cables are running inside of a wall or inside of a pipe? Uh, for this, you need a different chart. Uh, here I have a German chart and it's telling you that it's a difference if a wire uh, runs like this in the air or if it's together with other wires 
in different configurations or if it's running inside of the earth, inside of an electrical pipe or if it's mounted in a pipe on the wall and how many strands there are and what if it's inside of a wall. So now let's check this chart here which is more complicated but very important uh, because this is what the Blue Sea Systems chart is not telling you. So now let's make a comparison with the 25 square millimeter cable that I've used here on my solar system. So if you now look at this chart for the 25 millimeter cable, let's check the values for all of those situations, which is in the air. Um, here we got 25 square millimeters. So it says that it can handle from 100 amps up to 140 amps. Now let's check what the cable could take if it's inside of a pipe B1. Let's check this one here. 25. So inside of a pipe it can handle between 80 and 100 amps. And then inside of a wall the 25 cable can handle between 68 and 80 amps. So this is pretty much it guys. So just watch out if you put your cables into pipes or inside of the wall. Uh, but as long as it's free hanging like here in the system, then you're fine with using this chart here. All right guys, so this is it for today. I really want to thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.